So my dining room currently looks like this, but I want it to look more like this, this, or maybe this. What do they all have in common? This massive canvas. <laughs> okay, not quite this big, but you get the idea. Also, I don't have any disposable income right now, so we're gonna DIY this entire thing for free. Now, I know best is a little subjective, but hear me out. Because I don't have disposable income, my best course of action is to figure out something that I can make myself with materials I can find for free that has a massive visual and energetic impact on the space. One thing that I always see in really well-designed homes that I absolutely love is massive artwork. I'm stoked for the day when I can afford to support people who do art for a living, like my favorite artist at the moment, Cater Boley, who we'll draw some inspiration from later on. But, uh... <laughs> We're not there yet. Now, we need to be mindful of scale here. Even though the whole point of this video is that we're making an absolutely massive painting, we don't want to make it so comically big that it looks like that one painting in Schitt's Creek, because my ceilings are about as tall as those motel ceilings. Like, the painting was appropriately sized for their mansion, because as the space gets bigger, the things in it also tend to get bigger. You know, because we're visual creatures and we have a partially learned, partially innate sense of proportion and all that. But it just doesn't fit their new space. Now, obviously this was supposed to be very symbolic about their character growth and their old lifestyle not fitting them anymore, but you know, the point still stands. And also I'm getting on tangent and we have things to do. <sighs> Let's get into it. So first things first, I opened up Facebook Marketplace and I just searched for any big fabric thing that I could think of. So I searched for bed sheets. I searched for shower curtains. I was really hoping to find a drop cloth because that's like real canvas, it's nice and thick, but I did find a few canvases, but they were used and covered in drywall dust, which maybe could have worked, but I like really didn't want to deal with drywall dust in my washing machine that isn't even mine because I'm renting and then have my landlord charge me extra to fix it. So yeah, I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched some more, and then I yawned a lot. The shower curtain. I found the shower curtain. I don't think the colors on the screen are doing it justice, but it was this lovely blue-gray background with the weirdest medium brown, like, poop brown color for leaves. If you have the shower curtain, my condolences, and I'll just leave it at that. So I tried to bleach it, and, um, it didn't do anything. There was some leftover scrap wood in, like, my basement garage because I'm renting. And so I just went in there and I, you know, grabbed that. Now, when it comes to measurements, I don't really exactly know what the measurements are. I just made sure that the long pieces were the same size and that the short pieces were also the same size. And, and then I, you know, cut them with a hacksaw. These are the screws I had. I wasn't trying to buy any screws, so these were literally just the screws that I had lying around. I did two screws in the top and bottom pieces because... I really wanted to make sure that once I stapled the fabric on, that it wouldn't like twist and turn outwards because the fabric was pulling it. And so that's why I did two screws. Um, and only one in the middle because the middle doesn't matter because we're not stapling any fabric onto there. And then we moved on to attaching the pieces. As always, when you're working with wood, you really want to make sure to pre-drill your holes. This is actually really important. I know, I know we all want to skip this part, but you will crack your wood. I promise you will crack your wood, especially if it's old rotting wood, like the wood that I was using. And then we screw, and then we screw. Nah, I shouldn't put that in there. Okay, so now we got all of those drilled in. We got the middle brace on there too. It's going great. My partner's an art historian, so they saw me making this frame. And also, just for the record, this is not how the professionals make canvases and frames and whatever and it's apparently not called a frame i think it's called a stretcher or something that doesn't matter it's gonna work and it's gonna look great and that's all that matters um but anyways my partner threatened to sand this for me they threatened to sand the entire thing because i was just kind of like eh, i don't need to sand it and then they did bring up the good point about the fabric not poking through the corners so i was like okay fine i'll sand the corners since i don't have a sanding block 
I just wrapped the sandpaper around the measuring tape and honestly it worked great. So now instead of using math and you know measuring like a good person, I just kind of laid the fabric down on top of the frame. We're, again, we're calling it a frame, it's not really called a frame, but whatever. Marked it with a big fat sharpie and then I just cut it. Also this might be a really good point to note is that the average shower curtain size is 72 by 72 inches or this much for my non-American friends. And so an approximately four by six foot or this much for my non-American friends, this size painting will actually work really well because I can cut off enough of the fabric from the one side to sew it on the bottom and it'll be great. I probably didn't explain that very well, but you'll, you'll, you'll see what happens. The next morning. Um, I woke up to this. The, the painting that we had there just like fully fell down in the middle of the night, which I took as a sign that I really needed to finish this painting. Also like scuffed my wall pretty bad, so I'm gonna need to repaint over that. Just a side note here, um, I did the final pretty shots. I haven't painted over that yet. I put a plant in front of it and said, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You really don't need a sewing machine for this part. It'll take longer, but you really don't need one. All you really need is a needle and some thread and you know, some time and patience and maybe strong hands. So remember what we did earlier, we cut the fabric and we like moved it to the bottom. That's what we're doing with this right now. We're just sewing those two sides together. The stitch that I'm gonna use, because if you don't know anything about sewing, this might be all brand new to you. The stitch that I'm gonna use is called a back stitch. This is the strongest type of stitch. So essentially, imagine you have a lot of pre-made holes in your fabric. We don't actually have the pre-made holes, but we're going to like imagine where they are placed. Let's say you have hole A, hole B, hole C, and hole D, all in a nice neat little line. We're going to come up through hole B, down through hole A, up through hole C, down through hole B, up through hole D, down through hole C, and so on. Did that make sense? Hopefully, because I'm not explaining it again. You'll have to rewatch it. <laughs> so, moving on. I did find that the easiest way to go about this, um, and this just really takes kind of some practice and knowing your body and how you like to sew. Um, not that I sew that much. I've literally hand sewed like one other thing ever. So literally, I promise you can do this if you're a newbie. It's okay. You got this. Um, what I have found is that it makes more sense for me to have the seam along my left hand and the needle in my right hand because I'm right-handed. And then all of the extra fabric is just facing towards my right hand towards the right side of my body. And we're sewing more. And we just keep sewing. Yeah, um, it really wasn't that bad. It only took a few hours one night and then it was done. And it, yeah, it, it's not that bad. It's stapling time. So I just, you know, swept off the back deck, you know, trying to be good, trying not to get like dirty shit all over my canvas. I laid out the fabric right side down and then I just put the frame slash stretcher situation on top of it. One more quick story time. When I went to go get the stapler, which is in, by the way, the cutest like vintage metal like green box thing. I don't know. It's adorable. When I went to go get the stapler, the person I got it from was also trans and we didn't talk about it. We just kind of like acknowledged it without like saying words and it was just so sweet to be seen by a complete stranger as trans um which is something i don't get very often anyways uh we're gonna skip over the me being emotional part here and then we're just gonna get straight to the stapling if you're one of the like two people who are actually gonna do this make sure you pull the fabric really tight but like not so tight that you're gonna pull out the staples or rip the fabric but like tight you know nice nice and taut after I did that, I just kind of like, you know, sloppily cut off the excess and then folded the corners up and stapled them down. For this weird little bit, I didn't want to cut through what I had sewn, so I kind of just cut around it and folded it over and stapled it in place. And now it's paint time. Although not quite because this is really just the priming stage, <laughs> not to the fun part yet. Um, so I went back down to my basement. If you don't have a basement room full of paint like I do, you know, some of us just get lucky. I was definitely able to find some free paint on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, but they were just kind of far away and I really wasn't feeling driving that far. 
and I already had free paint here, so I was like, you know what? Fuck it. So I stirred it up and started painting. And now, just because, you know, I love you, I care about you, I want the best for you, here are some gorgeous B-roll shots of me painting. So in the middle of priming it, I started to notice that the fabric was getting looser. And the fabric wasn't actually getting looser, but it's just because it's wet. And so it started, you know, stretching out a bit more. And so over in the top left corner here, as you can see, um, it's starting to like buckle and wave a little bit. Don't worry, it's fine. At least with my fabric, it just did that. And then once it all dried, it just kind of all, you know, snatched back up and it was all good. Oh, also, if you don't know, the whole entire point of priming, especially for a canvas, but any porous material really, is because the porous material is porous, and it will soak up all of your paint. This shot's for all you foot lovers out there. Here you go. Although it's mostly just because I've got a really good tip attached to it. Um, my high school choir teacher taught me that when you're painting, especially in a place where you don't want to track paint everywhere, you gotta paint with bare feet, because that way, if you step in paint, and hopefully it'll just stay on your drop cloth because you'll notice it right away. So, after we got the primer all done, I know, I know you've probably all seen this everywhere, all over the internets, but yes, I did do the baking soda hack. Uh, because right now, what I wanna do first is get some texture on there. I don't know if I've ever gone to an art gallery and seen like a perfectly flat painting. You could definitely do this with compounder spackle. Honestly, it would probably be easier because this was a struggle getting it to the right consistency. Um, I needed a lot of baking soda, but you know, I just kept mixing, kept mixing, and I added more, and I mixed, and I added more, and I mixed, and I added more, and I mixed, and it was, you know, starting to get kind of gloopy. And I put it on, and it was, it was, you know, not good. <laughs> it was dripping. I was trying to say it was fine, but it was not fine. Um, so I added more, and we just kept mixing. And I had more, and more mixing. And finally that was better. And we started to get some texture. Look at my cute little helper. I got paint all over the nose. So we did the texture. Yay, the texture is done. Sweet, cool, good. So now onto the fun part, but like also kind of the stressful part because we have to decide what we want to paint, um, <laughs> which is, you know, an ordeal sometimes if you're like not good at decision making like I am, or you just like second guess yourself all the time or whatever. I brought all these inspiration pictures into my Notion, which is a super great app to organize your life. I had some like really bold things. I had some much more like lighter, delicate things. And then we got some, you know, some cute landscapes. I'm here for a landscape. Um, but it was just like a little bit too representational for what I was going for. And then this one, I really loved. I love the black and the white and the neutral. And it's just like simple and bold. So anyways, here's a fun montage of me painting this massive canvas. So here's what it looked like after I kind of painted the background. I could have left it like that if I was like feeling it, but I wasn't. it wasn't. It just felt a little too like boring to me. I don't know. So I went on my phone and I kind of just like played around sketching some like different ideas. And this is the one that I came up with. Once I decided what I was going to paint, I took this big fat Sharpie and just kind of sketched it out. And I kind of liked it. I actually really liked the Sharpie and I wasn't like trying to like it at all. It was literally just to trace it out. But I really wanted something much more bold and much more visually impactful. So I did go back and make the line nice and thick. But like honestly, if you're trying to do a similar style, Sharpie over lots of texture, not bad. Ooh, and now here is my favorite part. This is 
by far the most fun part but it was also the fastest which makes me sad because i wanted to, it to last longer but anyways i didn't have a massive paintbrush like you know sometimes people have like those like six inch wide paintbrushes or whatever i didn't have one of those so i literally just like crunched up some paper towel and dipped it in paint and it worked so good honestly i loved it look at that satisfying time lapse So here's how it turned out. Now, like any true artist, we're gonna sign our work. You know, I struggled over <laughs> how I was gonna write my name, and then I eventually, you know, kind of just went for it. <laughs> it turned out way better than I expected. Now all we gotta do is hang it. I lied to you just a little bit. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I was really trying to do this entire thing for free. I couldn't find any ice screws on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, and so I just went to the hardware store. And like, honestly, I totally didn't have to get the picture wire. And you know, this is a big enough painting that like, I really don't want it to fall down. So I was just like, you know what, let's just do it the right way for once. <laughs> Look at me doing things the right way. And these I already had. These, I'd never heard of these before. These are phenomenal. I don't know where we got these, but they're a screw and an anchor all in one. So this was a grand total of $3.99. Again, I'm sorry I lied to you. So here's a cute little diagram of how we're gonna put the eye screws and the wire on, and then also here's a little reminder to drink some water. Because you deserve it. Your body has been good to you. Drink some water. So just screw those in. This definitely takes some like physical effort. Um, although honestly, I probably should have, you know, pre-drilled a hole, like I literally said earlier in the video. And then we threaded our wire and measured it and cut it and twisted it. And you know, because that's how you do a picture wire. Uh, I feel like that part's pretty self-explanatory. And then I hung it, and by hung it I mean I struggled for quite a while. And here is the final result. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with it, which as an art major, it's some pretty high praise for myself. I don't know that it's gonna stay like this forever. I might paint it something else because I might want to pop a color. And so here's some more pretty shots because I don't really have any more words to say at you. So yeah, yeah. I don't know how to end videos yet. Um, do all the youtube -y things and here's me being a literal gremlin. Bye.